All right, this is one of the very first things I do to any new Harley Touring that I get my hands on. Once you do it, you'll never want to go back to stock. And that is I get a Kiryakin extended brake pedal. And let's talk about it a little bit and I'll tell you why. If you appreciate this channel, all the videos we put out, we do sell them in the Law Abiding Biker store. I'll link to it in the description below. They come in black or chrome and versions for lowers and without lowers. So make sure you check your fitment. We'll get one on the way to you. All right, and I'm not sure why Hardy engineers do the stock brake pedal the way they do, but it's been like this for years. And basically it's back too far and it's up too high. I'm 5'8", my shoe size is nine and a half, so kind of an average sized rider, and it's very uncomfortable for me. Whether I'm out touring or you know riding through the city or when I'm training, uh, you know, low speed maneuvers. It's really awkward the way it is and I have to get my foot up really high and it's in and it actually cramps my inner thigh. And the best thing about this Kiryakin extended brake pedal is that it's super easy to install. We're gonna show you how to do that in this video. You can do it right in your very own shopper garage. And so how is the extended brake pedal that we're gonna put on today different from the stock? Well, the biggest thing is, is it's a little bit longer and it's lower. And so it's a much more comfortable and ergonomic position. And I'm definitely gonna tell you that once you get rid of the stock and use something like this extended brake pedal we're gonna put on, you're never gonna want to go back to stock and you're gonna realize how uncomfortable that is. And it really comes down to a safety issue for me. I train a lot of motorcycles, especially emergency braking and threshold braking. The problem with the stock one is, it's back so far that your toes actually under it and it's very high. So in an emergency situation, you've got to get it out from under, up, over, and onto the brake. This one that we're putting on is out farther and so my toe is never under it. So, and it's lower. So it's in an emergency situation, it's really easy for me to just get my toe up and hit the brake. All right, with that said, let's get this thing installed, huh? All right, and to make this easier, he's going to start. It's best just to get this floorboard out of your way. That's a 5 16 hex head. And there's two bolts down there at the bottom. And if you've never taken these off for the first time stock, they've got a lot of thread lock on them and they come out pretty rough. All right, and you're just getting the second one there. Again, this is gonna remove the whole floorboard uh, and brackets. All right, and with that uh, other bolt, you can remove the whole floorboard system there. All right, next we're gonna take the two bolts out. That's gonna uh, loosen up the rear master cylinder there. Quarter inch hex head. All right, and just moving over to the second one there. And with those two out, that's just gonna sit there for now till we remove a pin in the rear. Okay, with a 5 8 uh, socket there, that's the main bolt there that holds the brake pedal arm on. Just backing that out. It's got a nut and a washer on it there. Save your nut and washer, you'll reuse those. All right, so the master cylinder's loose now uh, and the arm. You will see there's an O-ring in the bottom of that arm stock. We don't need that. Um, that's just for the stock one. But you can kind of move this forward and out a little bit. Just to give yourself a little more room to get your hands in the rear, you'll see in a minute, we're gonna have to work on a cotter pin and the pin that holds the rear here. All right, so what you're looking at is the rear of the brake cylinder. There's a pin that holds the brake pedal arm to the rear of the cylinder there. On the inside of that pin is a cotter pin. And so it can be a little bit tedious, but you just gotta use a flathead, pliers, whatever you need to flatten that cotter pin out so you can pull it out. Yeah, we just got a long pair of forceps here now that the cotter pin's flattened and you can use those to get down in there. And there we go, got the cotter pin out. And you can see on the back side of that, there is a small washer. And he's gonna get that washer off there and go ahead and save that. All right, and with that, he can now remove that pin. All right, and with the pin removed, he can go ahead and remove the whole brake pedal arm here. All right, and here's what I was talking about. This is your uh, new Kiryakin extended brake pedal. They're pretty much lined up here, how they're gonna go on the bike. That's your stock one there. And you can see the Kiryakin, how much flatter and how much farther it goes out. It's not a ton. Uh, when you look at them like this, but it makes the world of difference. And especially because it doesn't just curve up like this one. So this will give you a better idea about how much flatter the Kiryakin one is. And again, you can just see that it's longer. So much more comfortable. These should be stock on Harleys, in my opinion. All right, guys, real quick, and we'll get right back into your video. A lot of man hours, effort, and of course, finances go into keeping this YouTube channel going strong. There is a way you can support us by becoming a patron member, link in the description below. Basically, you pledge a certain amount per piece of content, no risk to you because you can put a monthly cap. There are benefits such as t-shirts and stickers, access to the private Facebook group, it's a troll-free zone, access to our live video broadcast and chat, access to our premium videos up on request, and access to those ride and meet up events. All right, let's get back into your video.
All right, so to get this Kiriakin brake pedal on, we're gonna have to loosen the crash bars. It's a little bit longer, so when he slides it on there, you can see you can't get it lined up there. You can see in the back, the hinges are hitting the exhaust and then we're in the front, we're on the crash bars. And then if he goes underneath, same thing, he can't get on there, he's not gonna be able to line it up. And then uh, if he tries to put it on any other way there, you're gonna run into the same problem and those hinges are gonna hit the exhaust pipe. So we're gonna loosen the crash bars. All right, and with the Torx T45, he's gonna go ahead and remove that first one underneath on the right side here. Moving around to the left side, he's gonna remove this one too. And before you put the brake pedal on, clean and regrease the shaft there with some multi-purpose grease. All right, and with the bolts removed on both sides of the crash bars, it gives us just enough that he can uh, manhandle this out of the way a little bit and get that brake pedal lined up. All right, and so now the uh, brake pedal there, he's just lining it up. It's got two cheek plates and then there's a shaft coming off the rear of the brake cylinder. He's gotta get that in between them there. That's where his pin's gonna go through. You can just move things around until you get them lined up. Okay, now he's gonna go ahead and get his pin pushed through there. And you can just move things around like he is, get that hole lined up. All right, you can see you got it through there. And now we get to get that cotter pin back through that hole. And so once you get that pin through, uh, just make sure that you reuse the washer that came on it before you put the cotter pin through. And just coming in with his forceps there. And you can see him spinning it around there. That gives him a position where he can get some pliers on it and bend these back. You can use pliers or a flathead screwdriver or a combination, whatever you need to do to get that pin, uh, those ears bent back so it won't come out. All right, just putting his bolts, of course, don't forget back in the rear master cylinder there. Quarter inch hex head on those. Put a little blue Loctite if you like. All right, next he's gonna torque them. This is our very handy torque wrench. I'll link to it in the description below. Very affordable and we've used the heck out of them. It gives an audible signal uh, and a visual. Those are 10 and a half to 12 and a half foot pounds is what he's putting on those. There we go. Link in the description below to those wrenches. All right, we're using the hardware here. You got a washer, five eighths inch nut. He's got a socket there. Using our torque wrench again, 15 to 20 foot pounds on that guy. All right, so your new one doesn't come with the uh, rubber pad there. There's two different versions. We took this one off the stock one. It just slides off, but you can use like some soapy water. They are on there kind of tight. The other version, it actually bolts. There's one nut underneath, there's a hole in it. But uh, for this one, we're just gonna slide it back on here. It's still got some soapy water in it there. There we go. One Kiriakin extended brake lever installed on this Harley Touring. And once you use one of these guys, you'll never want to go back to stock. Of course, we'll get our floorboard back on there. 